swinging town I know called Capital City People stop and scream Stiver Island, home of Capital City. A man-made island constructed as a prosperous place of work, commerce, fun and good living. We are now approaching our landing, so folks if you'd like to fasten your seatbelts will soon be arriving. Remember the days of flicking through a game magazine to see the upcoming games? Seeing the usual AAA titles up front getting full page spreads? Then going further back to see smaller titles which got half a page at best, then one immediately catches your eye. This is how I discovered SOS The Final Escape. It was different and had, to me at the time at least, a unique premise. An earthquake survival game. I saw that and was immediately sold. Developed by the good folks at IREM, a Japanese company that's been around since 1974 and has a long game library under their belt. They don't have a particular style or genre that other developers do. They will make anything. Anything! Hammering Harry, Kung Fu Master, Dino City and many many R-Type. So it comes to no surprise that something like this came about. Localised by Age Tech for both European and US releases, it's another game with another pointless name change. SOS The Final Escape for PAL regions and Disaster Report for NTSC. Why do that? Oh well, it doesn't matter. You play as Keith. Hey! Exciting start. Keith is a reporter starting a new job at the Town Cry newspaper until the first earthquake hits as he's on a train crossing a bridge. And that's all you get for now. You're on your own to find your bearings, find a way off the train and find your way to the island. I like that, the game doesn't hold your hand. Exploration is key as finding which way to go and what obstacles can be tackled is part of the puzzle I guess you could say. There's no jump function as leaping around unstable structures wouldn't be a sensible idea. One thing that took a while to get used to, even though this is a full 3D third person game, there's no camera control with the right stick. With a game that requires some precision movements, that can be a tad tricky. There is a first person view to help you get your bearings, and this will sometimes relocate the camera, but usually it just does what it likes. This is a survival game and that means provisions. The military are aware of the quakes aren't helping with the rescue operations. Hey, there's a helicopter. Oh, this'll be a short game. Hey, I'm over here! Yeah, we can see you, so... Here, have a backpack instead. Thanks. Oh, and thanks for dropping on such a precarious... Uh, <sighs> Dicks. Well, let's see what we have here. A small water bottle, some gauze, and a key ring with no keys on it. Great. The backpack is divided up into cubes where items of different cube amounts can be stored. This one is pretty small, but you do find larger bags along the way. The water bottle and the water situation overall is important. Here is Keith's health and thirst gauge. Doing anything physical will increase thirst, and if it depletes, health will start to go down and Keith will move very slowly. The manual calls it the first gauge, but here it's QP. Quench points? Quality Perrier? Oh, I know! Quaff power! Keith is not alone in this. During an aftershock, he hears cries for help. Hey! <laughs> Hurry! Further down the bridge, he comes across Karen, clinging for dear life in another train. Please! Help me! To help is not a simple matter of just walking over because gravity exists. Here is where the puzzle aspect comes in. Figuring out a tricky situation, where to go, what items to salvage and use is where this game shines. With a dynamic environment, things can change at any moment. You're walking down a road and suddenly a whole building will come crashing down, leaving you to find a different route. Keep on your toes mind, as falling masonry isn't your friend. Fear not, Karen's presence doesn't turn this into a tedious escort mission. Except when drinking is involved. Scattered around the games are taps and water fountains, which are also the save points. It's a good thing that infrastructure remained intact. Keith will have his fill and fill any empty bottle space. But Karen? No. The tap's right there, Karen, you could just use it yourself. But you just stand there, waiting for me to hand you the bottle! Fine, here's your quaff power, your majesty. Thanks. Apart from that, she pretty much looks after herself, including requesting going down ladders first. Can I go first, please? I'm not wearing any... um... <laughs> oh. Well, damn. Call me a pig if you must, but I'm far too curious to let this one go. <gasps> Did you forget about the first person view? What else are you covering up, Karen? The main goal is to get off the island, obviously. 
and from frequent radio broadcasts, rescue operations have been conducted at the centre of the island, which means a nice variety of locations accompanied with a rather casual approach. In such a dangerous and desperate situation, the game runs at a slow pace. Buildings are falling, fires are burning, and huge cracks are appearing. But hey, Key's got time to explore, climb on everything, try on a selection of funny hats, and find the game's collectible of novelty compasses. At one point, Keith and Karen have to travel down a fast-moving aqueduct by constructing a raft with nearby debris. Including a can of paint giving you a choice of four designs. Mmm, priorities. Speaking of priorities, Karen wants to stop by her apartment and find her dog, Jen. Because yes. Oh no, your dog, ah, what would we ever do if your dog is missing? Well, let's both climb onto a wonky two-wheel vehicle during an earthquake and look for him. And don't worry, Karen, if we can't find him and get out of this, you could always get a new dog and call it Next Gen. No, oh, there he is. Woohoo. As things progress, you come across other survivors. A fellow journalist casual freelancer Greg to Mickey Rooney and his wife. I like to yell at mice with my shirt off. What the hell? Don't take pictures of me without asking. I'll sue you. Sorry, it's in my blood. And businessman Albert Sims and his business partner Terry Stiver. The brains behind Stiver Island and Karen's uncle. The Thick Plottons. You slowly piece together what's really going on. This isn't merely a survival sim, there's a deeper agenda afoot. I won't spoil it, but this takes a dark turn and it definitely keeps you interested. It's the kind of place I enjoyed this when it first came out, played it again for this review and enjoyed it again. It's a little slow, pacing and technically due to the slowdown caused by such dynamic environments. But it's that kind of out of left field game that gets my attention, and part of a series which we only got half of. The first sequel, Raw Danger, deals with a flooding underground city. There is a PAL version which is a little rare, but I do intend to get at some point. The second sequel, the... Uh, let's use a text to voice for this. There we go, I'm sure that pronunciation was 100% accurate. This was a PSP game only released in Japan. And the final sequel, yeah that one, was originally slated for the PS3 in 2011, but was put on hold due to the actual earthquake and tsunami at the time. But fortunately, it wasn't canned. It is now due for release on PS4 in 2018. Will it be released outside Japan? I certainly hope so. It's capital city, my home sweet, swinging home.